Welcome back, and boy did we have a busy week in the world of AI news. NVIDIA stock goes crazy, again. The job market is changing faster than anyone thought. AI and Hollywood continue to clash. More AI safety concerns. So many new launches from Meta, Midjourney, OpenAI, and an entirely AI-based social network launches, and so much more. Towards the end, I'll reveal the winner of this week's AI video of the week. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's AI news. Let's go. First, let's talk about some of the incredible AI launches that happened this week. Midjourney launched InPainting, a highly demanded feature that allows users to select a portion of an image and write a new prompt just for that section. Check out this example where the user replaces a lightsaber with a banana. This feature is in direct competition with Adobe's Firefly product, which has had this since launch. And as always, you can use Remix and other features to help fine tune the output of InPainting. Next, one of my personal favorite stories of this week, Microsoft continues to impress me to no end. This week, they launched being able to run Python code directly from Microsoft Excel. Okay, I realize how big of a nerd I am for being this excited about Python and Excel, but the opportunities are truly enormous. Python is well known as the go-to to coding language for artificial intelligence. And Excel is the software that powers so many businesses across the world. With this update, you can now use the power of Python, including its top tier and incredibly powerful data libraries to run queries, create graphs and charts, and analyze your Excel data right from Excel. All you need to do is use the pi command and you have access to the many Python libraries easily. One of the biggest headaches with Python is environment management, which is why I always use Anaconda in every one of my tutorial videos. And and Microsoft realized this and has partnered with Anaconda to allow for a standardized Python environment from within Excel. The one potential downside to all of this awesomeness is that your Python code will run in Microsoft's cloud, taking away a lot of control from users. If you want to try it out, a preview is already available. I'll drop a link in the description below for where you can get it. Next, OpenAI launched fine tuning of ChatGPT with GPT-4 fine tuning coming later this year. This allows users to customize their own versions of ChatGPT. So why is this so cool? Open source models have allowed for fine tuning, but now closed source ChatGPT allows you to create models specific to your use cases. This allows for improved steerability, reliable output formatting, and most interestingly, custom tones. I recorded a tutorial video that I'll be posting early next week, walking through exactly how to fine tune ChatGPT, including how to create the data set necessary to do the fine tuning easily. The data set creation always tends to be the most tedious part of fine tuning any model. Make sure to check back in a couple days if you're interested in seeing that video. I feel like I say this every week, but Meta continues to absolutely dominate open source AI. Just this week, they launched an incredible translation model called Seamless. You can translate text to text, audio to text, text to audio, and everything in between. It supports 100 languages and works really well. The best part, it's absolutely free. The only downside is it's released on a research license, similar to Llama 1, so it's not commercially viable. If you wanna try it out, I'll drop a link in the description below for where you can test it. Meta is also rumored to launch a coding model based on Llama 2 called Code Llama. This will be a fine-tuned version of Llama 2 catering to coding use cases and will compete directly with Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI's coding assistance. Meta is using a tried-and-true playbook of commoditizing their competitors' strengths by releasing open-source model after open-source model, a playbook employed by Microsoft for years. Microsoft is finally getting a taste of their own medicine. Next, AI continues to make strides in helping with health use cases with the FDA clearing AI-powered software that pinpoints suspicious findings in chest x-ray. We've been hearing for a while that AI can read medical imaging extremely well, and I can't think of any reason why we wouldn't want to leverage AI for this. Doctors make mistakes, AI makes mistakes, so why not let them check each other's work and make doctors' lives easier in the process? This should have so many benefits, such as improving the performance of radiologists, reducing their burnout, and driving down the cost of imaging. This is one of my favorite use cases for AI because it's clearly going to have such a huge impact on the world. Our next story is not about AI, but it's too awesome not to talk about. A new city is launching. Yes, you heard me right a new city. This city is remarkable because it was built to be 100% car free. Located in Tempe, Arizona, this neighborhood was built by a company called Cul-de-Sac, entirely from scratch around alternative modes of transportation, like buses, trains, scooters, and bikes. Car culture dominates America's cities. And as someone who grew up in Los Angeles, I would be beyond excited to ditch my car if I could. Everything you need to live is within walking distance in this new neighborhood. Restaurants, cafes, grocery stores, gyms, bars, and more. There's no asphalt, 
salt, there's plenty of open space and gorgeous landscaping. And I only get slightly culty vibes when I think about an entirely self-sufficient neighborhood. But aside from that, I appreciate what the founder is trying to do by making a city as walkable as many European cities already are. Now let's move on to some legal AI news, starting with some troubling legal times for the biggest AI companies. First, OpenAI. They've been getting hammered from a legal perspective, starting with a potential New York Times lawsuit that could force OpenAI to wipe ChatGPT and start all over. The suit will allege that OpenAI was trained on copyrighted material from the New York Times. According to an article by Ars Technica, the result, experts speculate, could be devastating to OpenAI, including the destruction of ChatGPT's dataset and fines of up to $150,000 per infringing piece of content. Just a month ago, another law firm filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of comedian Sarah Silverman and other authors against both OpenAI and Meta, accusing these companies of illegally using their copyrighted material to train their models. And late last year, the same firm filed suit against Microsoft's GitHub for their Copilot product, alleging it too used copyrighted code to train its model. And once again, that same firm repeated their formula and filed suit against Stability AI, Midjourney, and DeviantArt over AI image generators. Although OpenAI and Meta don't fully disclose the sources of their training data, apparently the authors were able to figure it out by clues in the data and suspect OpenAI may be using 294,000 books downloaded from notorious shadow library websites. It'll be fascinating to watch how these lawsuits play out. With the armies of lawyers that both of these companies have, I'd be surprised if they knowingly train their models on copyrighted material. If Meta or OpenAI's models were truly trained on illegally obtained copyrighted material, they're going to be in big trouble. Back to the New York Times lawsuit, according to NPR, OpenAI risks a federal judge ordering ChatGPT's entire data set to be completely rebuilt, which would spell absolute disaster for OpenAI and lead to an avalanche of similar suits from countless other content creators. As someone who's had their videos riffed from YouTube and posted to TikTok without my consent and received millions of views, I understand how frustrating it can be as a content creator to have your work stolen. And likely because of the legal threats it's facing, OpenAI's newest ChatGPT version has started hiding its sources. In the last few months, large language model providers like Meta and OpenAI have stopped disclosing their sources of training data. But now, a new research paper suggests that models are taking it a step further. According to Business Insider, ChatGPT now attempts to avoid responding to user prompts with exact phrasing from copyrighted works. According to a technical paper published August 8th by a group of AI scientists working for the research arm of ByteDance, who also owns TikTok. And that's interesting given TikTok is a huge vacuum of copyrighted material and they don't seem to care or do anything about it. Also, according to the research paper referenced by Business Insider, in an effort to avoid showing it was trained on such material, ChatGPT now disrupts the outputs when one tries to continuously extract the next sentence, which did not happen in previous versions of ChatGPT. We speculate that ChatGPT developers have implemented a mechanism to detect if the prompt aims to extract copyrighted content or check the similarity between the generated outputs and copyright protected contents. Ultimately, these cases will have to go in front of a judge because there's a strong chance that there's enough snippets and quotes of pretty much every popular book book in existence on the internet that these large language models could accurately rewrite books like Harry Potter without having been trained on the actual source material. And the hits keep coming. Just this week, a ruling was delivered that AI-generated art is not protectable by copyright law. According to HollywoodReporter.com, a federal judge on Friday upheld a finding from the U.S. Copyright Office that a piece of art created by AI is not open to protection. And copyright law has never stretched so far to protect works generated by new forms of technology technology operating absent any guiding human hand. This seems like a complete lack of understanding of AI. Not only did humans create and fine tune these generative art models, but they guided them using prompting to create the new art. To say that there was no human involvement seems just false. Others may disagree, but I see AI as a tool in an artist's toolbox like any other. An analogy that makes sense to me is Stability AI is the company that makes the paintbrush, Stable Diffusion is the paintbrush, and the person writing the prompt is the artist. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Next, the tension between Hollywood and writers continues to grow. As the writer strike continues, with one of the most significant issues being how AI will affect writing jobs, 96% of the biggest entertainment companies are boosting AI spending. And this isn't only in the US. In China, 100% of entertainment companies are increasing AI spend, similar to India and the UK. Take a look at these charts. The first chart shows the percentage of major entertainment companies increasing generative AI spending by country. Next, we see that writers 
workers are among the top occupations at risk due to AI. Finally, the following chart shows that entertainment and media top the planned generative AI spending by industry. And it's not only movies and TV that's being disrupted by AI. Music seems to be actively adopting AI. YouTube this week announced a partnership with Universal Music Group to create an AI framework for music based on three fundamental AI principles. One, AI is here and we will embrace it responsibly together with our music partners. Two, AI is ushering in a new age of creative expression, but it must include a appropriate protections and unlock opportunities for music partners who decide to participate. And three, we've built an industry leading trust and safety organization and content policies. We will scale those to meet the challenges of AI. As mentioned in a previous video, I'm impressed by the music industry's adoption of AI rather than trying to fight it legally, which failed them in the past when previous technologies disrupted their industry. Next, the world of social media is changing in the face of AI. Snapchat's AI bot was all over the news this week because it was glitching so hard. Since its launch, the the in-app digital assistant has seen numerous bugs and breakdowns, but now it's going rogue by posting videos to users' feeds without their approval. As first reported by TechCrunch, the My AI feature posted a one-second video story and then stopped responding to users' requests. That is truly scary. But since AI is already posting on behalf of humans, why not go all in with this concept? Well, a new social network called Be Fake did just that. The app, started by former Machine Zone CEO Kristen Garcia Dumont, is a social media app for digital self-expression with the tagline, why be real when you can be fake? To be honest, I kind of like this idea. Social media apps are supposed to be all about reality, even though they are highly curated portions of people's lives and generally have lots of gloss and fakeness. So let's stop pretending and own being fake. Be fake is all about self-expression and creativity, where being fake online is welcomed. Take a look at this explanation video. Why be real when it's fun to be fake? Be honest, we're not always our creative best and not every moment is ready to share. So give your reality an AI lift. Be fake is an effortless and fun introduction to AI that allows you to transform every moment, no matter how messy, into a social media masterpiece. To reduce the pressure and time it takes to create that perfect moment, our app allows you to explore artistic expression all at the press of a button. Why be real when you can be anything? Be fake. Now, let's talk about the business of AI and business is booming. NVIDIA crushed their Q2 earnings, sending their stocks soaring in after hours trading. Demand for their chips, which power much of the AI models out there, is driving their 100% increase in revenue from just a year ago. NVIDIA is now the fifth most valuable company in the world. Take a look at this chart. NVIDIA was chugging along until they were in the right place at the right time to power this wave of generative AI, where before they were just seen as nerdy chips for gamers to improve their frames per second, now they're powering generative AI models all over the world. Next, the job market is being affected by AI every day. First, LinkedIn says ChatGPT related jobs have ballooned 21X since November. Before then, ChatGPT really wasn't even known. So it's no wonder that there's been such a huge increase in ChatGPT related jobs since then. A lot of people are scared about AI replacing their jobs, which is bound to happen. But as with every other technological revolution, many more jobs will be created. You're already ahead of the curve if you're watching this channel. And adding on to that trend, a new IBM study published says 40% of workers will need to reskill in the next next three years due to AI, which equates to about 1.4 billion people out of the 3.4 billion person total workforce. However, the silver lining is that 87% of executives polled for this study believe generative AI will augment roles rather than replace them. Not only that, people who do successfully reskill with AI will earn more. One of the most salient quotes from the report was, AI won't replace people, but people who use AI will replace people who don't. And our last story about the business side of AI is a new Goldman Sachs investment memo that forecasts AI to approach 200 billion in investment globally by 2025. The real question is, how much of that is going straight into NVIDIA's bank account? Is NVIDIA still the best AI stock to own right now? Now for the video of the week. This week's theme is terrifying. Check out the video.
I'm not sure how this video was made, but it was created by X user Javi Lopez. Awesome work. I'm now going to go sit in a fetal position for the rest of the day. Our last set of stories is about AI safety. Meta has confirmed that they will include an AI off switch as part of their content feed ahead of the August 25th deadline in the EU for the Digital Services Act. According to the TechCrunch article, under the DSA, users of larger platforms, 19 of which the EU designated back in April, must be offered a choice of a non-algorithmic feed where content sorting is not based on tracking. I suspect most people like the idea of having a non-algorithmic feed, but when they see how irrelevant most posts are going to be to them and how much noise there is, they're going to switch the AI back on quickly. And next, it seems that X, formerly Twitter, is struggling with bots still, even though Musk continued to slam Twitter's original management for how easy it is to prevent bot networks. He's realizing how wrong he really was. Now, with the power of ChatGPT and other AI, bot networks have become so good that they're proliferating throughout social networks, spreading crypto scams. Musk recently claimed the best way to stop bots was with subscriptions, which makes sense. They won't run if you make it financially infeasible to run a bot network. In addition to subscriptions, for people People who can't or don't want to pay X, Musk has been working on a verification system for users. Using government issued IDs and selfies, X is hoping their new verification system will help quell the bot problem. That's it for this week. If you liked this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.